Coming up, we have some stuff to discuss about how we treat black women in America and other things. Hit the music. time i'm al and i'm okay and welcome to the why you podcast Podcast. yes ma'am yes ma'am oh yes ma'am how you feeling i'm feeling good you feeling good how y'all feeling out there in the uh internet space listening to our voices in your home space or wherever you at wherever you are Welcome again to the YU Podcast, the number one podcast that loves people. Black, white, brown, red, yellow, pink, green, Power Rangers style. Go. (laughs) It's morphic. Go, go. Power Rangers. What was that? Go. (laughs) I couldn't get it. I got to stop making fun of you with that. Okay. So, y'all already know. We try not to take up too much of your time, but we just gonna let stuff flow. We're gonna see how we feel when we have this discussion. You sound like somebody daddy for real. Shut up, I mean, Michaela. You are somebody daddy. I am daddy, somebody But you're like, I'm trying not to take up too much of your time. We not gonna take up too much of your time, baby. We gonna wrap this up as soon as we can, okay? Okay. Okay. So um, But yeah, we just gonna give you what you say about an hour or so of people's time? Yeah, just, you know, something like you that. know, y'all got stuff to do. We got stuff to do. We are recording this pretty late on, on a, Monday. a Monday night. It's almost six thirty. That means that gives me just a little bit of time to edit this thing. Y'all know how I feel. It's full. Decl- de- 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 it's what? It's full disclosure. Okay. I don't know what full my mind was trying to say, <laughs> but um, okay. So really, what we want to jump into? It happened last week. Mm-hmm. Um, and it actually happened, I want to say it happened the day we dropped last week's episode, which was Tuesday. I'm not quite certain. You're right. But what we want to. You're right. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. What we want to discuss uh-huh. is mental health and, um, uh, well, it, it is a mental health situation mm-hmm. regarding Simone Biles mm-hmm. and how, um, she mentioned she was getting ready to have her, uh, her, I was going to say big meat, but that was going to come out wrong. But she was going to have her um, performance at the, I'm sorry, you still <laughs> laughing, at the Olympics. And she had to pull out because she she said that, stop it. <laughs> stop it, Michaela. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am. I'm making it so, I'm making it hard. There's another one for you. <laughs> so, <I'm childish. laughs> okay. But um, she was saying it was difficult for her to be able to try to do what she does because she right. felt like her mind and her body weren't together. together. And when that happens, you know, a lot of people who watch gymnastics <clears throat> should know how dangerous of a sport it actually is because mm-hmm. you are putting your body at risk for major uh, injuries and sometimes right. death. And if your focus is not fully there when trying to do something like that, all them twists and turns mm-hmm. and all that stuff that she do because she the best at it. Mm-hmm. If it's not, if you're not there mentally, then you can't put your body through that. And I respect her for taking that action and realizing that, mm-hmm. like, okay, I'm not mentally here where I want to be, so I'm just going to step back and let the other girl shine mm-hmm. and take that moment and stuff like that. Yeah. The issue that we want to discuss is the backlash that came from it mm-hmm. and how – Some Americans, the first thing they think is, oh, well, she quit on her country and stuff like that. Right. My frustration, of course, comes to, um, and there's something that I found on TikTok that I'm going to play for you. I don't, you haven't heard it, but it's something that it kind of put everything into perspective for me Mm -hmm. and kind of how things are seen within this country when it comes to black people and being an athlete or some sort of service. I'm going to play it after, you know, we have our discussion, Mm -hmm. but I want to get your thoughts. 
Um, I mean, because first we, we can talk about the backlash. Then after we do, we can also talk about the support from others that she had after it. Yeah. But like, I just hate that if you step out and do something for yourself to make sure that you're mentally and physically okay, either people think it's selfish. Oh, yeah. Um, Because they're being selfish because they, you know, basically want to see you in that light for their entertainment Mm because you know they're doing it for other people's entertainment again like i mean not just for their entertainment but you know Mm -hmm. sometimes it's self um status what is it self satisfactory Mm -hmm. self satisfactory yeah sometimes it's self satisfactory to be able to win all those medals and be um you know like a um a top figure for people and like people can look after well, look, look up to you, mm-hmm. you know, for doing stuff like that. But it's also for other people's entertainment. Yeah. So it's like, oh, you can't get up here to entertain me for mm-hmm. our country. You're being selfish. No, I'm taking a step back because I'm also a young adult. Mm-hmm. I'm a black African-American female in this world dealing with God knows what, because we deal with a whole lot and people don't see that side of things all the time. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I'm just going to take a step back and get myself together because if I'm not fully there, I can't do anything for anybody, not for myself, not for people around me, not for the entertainment for folks. So I just hate that it has to be backlash for that mm-hmm. because other people are being selfish. Now, I love the support that other people, um, you know, um, backed her mm-hmm. with, you know, doing that decision. Like, you know, first of all, her boyfriend, um, you know, he made sure to um, openly tell people how he supported her decision mm-hmm. and how, you know, he was like, you know, my arms are open when you, you know, come home, all this stuff. And then the, um, the support of like other celebrities and stuff like that. I saw them post things on their social media on how they feel. And the fact that she stepped up and took an account, like, you know, I'm doing this for me. Yeah. Okay. So that's my, that's my take on it. I think 100%. That you're right. Mm -hmm. There is this issue when it comes to, quote unquote, people in charge that feel like you have to sacrifice every inch of your being for something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the the generation coming up behind us, they are choosing to be more emotionally smart and uh, psychologically smart Mm -hmm. and understanding that, Hey, I'm not feeling it. My something's going on and I don't want to risk future health. I don't want to risk potentially ending up in a wheelchair because people believe that I've been quote unquote gifted this great opportunity to represent my country. When, you know that sometimes you'll end up in the wrong place and people don't care who you are and how many medals you've won. You're just a black figure in a space and will treat you as such. Mm -hmm. So, and it wasn't even that deep. She wasn't even thinking that deep. It was really just, she wanted to protect herself. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, she did what was best for her. And what I've seen Really, I've 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 become more cognizant of it as I get older, but a lot of black athletes are taking their mental health seriously. Mm -hmm. And whenever anyone hears the phrase mental health, they immediately make it they call it an excuse. Mm -hmm. And it's not because they have people obviously like. Oh, um, y'all throwing that word around or they'll be like, oh, you're throwing anxiety and stress around. Yeah. Like it's a real thing. Okay, yeah. it's not that people are throwing it around. It's that people are being more aware in this um, day and age mm-hmm. now of how they feel. Yeah, and it's 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 frustrating when, like, as someone or even with you, as people who deal with their mental health every single day and try to navigate it the best way that they can and to see someone who is a public figure and is someone who is doing amazing things and they're willing to take a step back and say, my mind ain't right. I need to get that in check so I can be the best person that I can be. It's inspiring mm-hmm. because with us, you know, you you have your own business. And you and I have talked extensively about how hard you push yourself mm-hmm. because you, you know, your business is your name. Mm-hmm. So when whenever your mental health is lacking, 
other things start to lack too. It's right. like with us, with the family. Mm-hmm. And I have like, when I see it, you know, I have to take a step back from myself and say, okay, right now Kayla needs me to pick up the slack. And sometimes I don't do well. Mm-hmm. Other off, or other times I can pick up on it. And I'm like, okay, what does Kayla need from me in this moment? Mm-hmm. And you know, with me, at least every four days, I'm going through something mentally when it comes to just life in general. And then, you know, I'm, I might not be able to tell you that I'm feeling this way or you'll be, you'll pick up on it and be okay. Like, what do you need? Right. Uh, just let me know. Like, do you want to talk about it? And sometimes I don't know how to talk about it, but you're, you're just willing to be there. Mm-hmm. And for her on that stage, on an international stage to say, I'm putting my mental health first in order to keep myself safe is huge. Right. And the people that decided to take that and turn it into something else, this segues into what I want to play. So um, this particular TikTok user, her name is Morgan e. C. Cole or Cole. I don't know. Um, I'm going to put a link in our bio or not the bio, but uh, the description of this episode. Mm-hmm. So you guys can go check out her uh her tiktok but when i heard it 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 made a bunch of sense it's i think it's about three minutes long Mm -hmm. um i might not play the whole thing i might play the whole thing because it's it's kind of important and i hope tiktok plays through because sometimes it decides to pause in the middle of a video (laughs) so i tried to let it buffer (laughs) while we were talking but hopefully um it'll make sense and then we can we can discuss while she talks too this is about to be a rant, so bear with me. Um, ever since slaves were brought to the United States in 1619, white people have never seen black people as human. For God's sakes, they counted us as property. The more slaves you had, the higher property value you had, okay? They only saw us as a commodity for what we could give them, okay? Whether it be slave labor, picking cotton, whatever. They only saw us as that, okay? Now, they did that for every aspect of human life, including sports. Take Jesse Owens, for example, came out of the 1936 Berlin Olympics with four Olympic gold medals. Okay, you know, the 1936 Olympics where this homeboy right here is trying to say that the Aryan race was the supreme race. Meanwhile, Jesse Owens was molly whopping white boys all up and down the track. Okay, but what happened as soon as he left the track? He ceased to be seen for his athletic prowess, got back to America, had to work as a janitor. Mm. Couldn't even find a job. Why? Because they saw him as the average run-of-the-mill everyday Negro. Now, overlay that with mental health and tell me that's not exactly what's happening to Naomi Osaka, Shakari Richardson, and now Simone Biles. People are not upset that Simone Biles quit. They're upset because she's not going to get a medal. She's not going to get the gold. She's not doing what she's supposed to do. Don't even get me started on the context of how people put the weight of the world on black women's shoulders from a young age, but then get upset when we buckle a little bit under the weight. But let's just be real here. Imagine if Tom Brady sat out of a Tampa Bay game citing mental health. We would create a 5K, a mental health institution. Hell, Joe Biden would start talking about mental health in sports. Why? Because every time a white man opens his mouth to tell you what a black person, especially a black woman, has been saying for decades, people then want to listen. People then want to listen. And it pisses me off. It pisses me off that y'all are treating these three black women like they are commodities. Mental health is not a commodity. It is a human characteristic. Because all three of those beautiful young black women are human. God damn it. Yep. Oh, she said that. She said it. I and I, re- I remember when I saw it, and I was like, she. Ooh, there's so it. many things that she's hitting on that a lot of people are afraid. I don't, I don't even think they're necessarily afraid to talk about it. The whole point is that they, there's so much weight put on black women's shoulders. Mm-hmm. They have to, like, with me, you feel pressure to be there for me. I try not to put that pressure on you, but because of how you, yeah, it's in you. It's, I got to be there. I got to be everything for the people that I love. And you then sacrifice yourself for everyone else. And then when, when the, when it's just you by yourself, 
you really don't know how to navigate that space because you you weren't really allowed to do so. So now, and that that's just me equating our lives into what she was saying. Right. And it continues now with these women, these black women who, who are public figures who do uh, magnificent things. The second there is uh, a dent in their armor, it's, it's time, time to attack. Break everything of their life, their characteristic yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And it doesn't, I mean, whenever it comes to racism, I say this all the time. It never really makes sense to me why people do the things that they do. Mm -hmm. But it's another thing where if you are a public figure, you're not allowed to make mistakes. There's some things about, um, you know, it's easy for me to look at my life and try to parallel it, but it's completely different because I'm a man, Mm -hmm. even though I'm a black man. And I know that there is a target on my back that is visible. Black women have targets on both sides, on the front and the back, because you're you're getting it from other races and you're getting it from your own. Right. So you're torn down from all these areas. So then you feel like you have to be strong and you feel like you cannot make a mistake. You can't be. the moment you do, it's like a microscope and everybody's just like looking yep. at that microscope. It's like, oh, she has a weakness. Let's exploit it. And it frustrates me so much because it happens over and over again like Mm -hmm. you know we're talking about this and it's easy to be on the outside looking in and saying like we could have we could have judged Simone Biles and said well she should have known where her mental health was at she should have done something to make sure her mental health was in check but then you look at um uh what's her name uh yeah you look at her she tried to do something now it may have been uh, marijuana, which y'all already know how I feel about that. It may have been that she tried to do something, and what happened? They made her scapegoat number one, and then it was well. Now she's not going to help bring America an arbitrary piece of metal to show that they're the fastest or whatever, right? Because everybody hates America anyway, <laughs> so. But she was still able to get some deals and stuff after that, yeah. too. And then, like, she's young, so she's still exactly able to be a part of it in the future. But as soon, like, you know, she was she was cocky and confident when she won. But the moment there was a weakness, not, a, not even a weakness, mm-hmm. a, a sign that she was human, the media and other human beings did everything they can to poke that weak spot and try to bring her down how it's like how dare you be confident in yourself mm-hmm. how dare you believe you that you're be the best confident we're gonna call you brash exactly <laughs> in their heads it's like if you're the best person in the world why do you have mental health problems do you not see the world that we're growing up like we grow we grew up in some foolishness not even knowing and then looking back we'd be like oh shit we grew up fucked up Right. That's like the same thing when when actors and stuff like that and and musicians and comedians go through stuff and they be like, well, you're at the top of the world. Like you got all this money. Like, why do you have issues? Money Money doesn't fix anything. Right. It don't change it. Issues are still there. Yeah. It's like it's like you might come from living in the slums. You might come from um, the gutter and make money. But then all that does is people. Other people outside of your circle believe that you have to take care of them because now you have money and you made it mm-hmm. instead of letting you accomplish what you're doing. And maybe they'll help you because you uh, out of the kindness of your heart. Help them along the way. Not a lot of people have that mindset. Right. And then whenever again, whenever we buckle, it's a big deal. And there there are some. Oh, there's a story, and I wish I would have thought of it. It just popped up in my head now. There was a um, a famous tennis player. Mm-hmm. He was asked about Simone Biles' uh, mental health, mm-hmm. and he was like, "You know, when you're when you're at this stage, you know, you have to be able to handle the sort of pressure to be on top, mm-hmm. right?" So he didn't do well at the Olympics. 
he was playing tennis. Mm-hmm. If I I'm, I can look up his name and I I know I would butcher it if I try to read it, but he was like a former number one male tennis player in the world, okay. and buckled. He smashed his racket and all that stuff, and then quit in the bronze medal game. And people this on Twitter after he said the stuff yes, he said that was after home. I want to say maybe two you or three days said, later. Just said all this stuff about oh, if you at this level, mm-hmm. you need to know how to da da da. And one and, and the thing is, is people was like. You probably should have kept your nose out of black women's business because now everyone is letting you have it talking about Mm. how about that pressure now? Mm. How about it? See, that's why, you know, I don't talk noise about anybody out loud. I mean, you know, I I (laughs) talk noise, noise. but I don't get on a public platform Mm. and I don't say that someone should be doing this or someone should be doing that because in my regular job, something frazzles me and my emotions get all out of whack. Mm-hmm. Today was one of those days where I was just, I was so thrown off about something that I was not prepared for that I found myself in tears over it. And I'm like, why am I like this? And I know it's some deep seated, like people used to make me feel stupid for not having stuff prepared or people love to cut your knees from under you for whatever reason. So in order to stop that from happening and stop feeling like I'm a piece of trash, I got to be prepared. Mm -hmm. I know somewhat, I haven't figured out what exactly the trigger, like what started it, but I know now it is a trigger for me and I try not to let my triggers get triggered. So then I don't sit in a ball of tears. That's just who I am. Mm -hmm. But then to, to, uh, I was saying that's why I don't talk about other people like that mm-hmm. and be like, well, this, that, and the third when my mental health isn't like that. But then you have people who I don't think they necessarily know that their mental health is trash. It's like they're just willing to walk around and be terrible to people. So then they sit and be like, oh, well, you should do this you and you should do this. Back. Yeah. And then all of a sudden when they uh, have a mental breakdown, everyone is jumping on their back instead of really – helping them get the help that they need Mm -hmm. because they're like, well, Hey, karma goes both ways. So everything that you put out now, you can get it back. That's, I don't don't know. I mean, you know, I talk, I I talk noise about everybody. Mm -hmm. I talk noise about everybody. That's just who I am. But I do it with you because that's just me venting. Mm -hmm. That's me. You know, I make jokes about it so I can kind of, Get, get over the fact that someone hurt my feelings because I am a soft human being, whether okay. I want to be or not. <laughs> but I don't go. I don't Your get feelings are valid. Thank you. But I don't I don't get in front of a group of people and say this person did this. This person is trash. This person is this. Right. You only vote them like that with me. Exactly. But that's because you give me the space to be vulnerable mm-hmm. and. <clears throat> Excuse me. Luckily for Simone, she does have people in her circle that will let her be vulnerable. Right. I'm pretty sure once all this backlash hit, it it I don't want to say it broke her because um, it might have, but we won't know, which is good because she has a she has a good circle of people around her where she can be who she really is outside right. of that public image. And but, then by the time this release. Which is on two tu- well tomorrow Tuesday tomorrow she'll be doing the um the balance meeting yeah that was announced today yeah and then so like when that was an <coughs> excuse me when that was announced a lot of people were saying well I hope she's not doing this because of pressure you know right. from everybody else or from her coaches or you know the team or whatever hopefully you know this was like her decision mm-hmm. and not because of outside influence right you know and I honestly for all all athletes black women black men. Anyone that plays a sport, I do hope that they have good avenues for them to express the hurt that they have dealt with in the past, because we've seen, we've lost, I mean, just, I mean, not even just in sports. Let me, let me take away sports. Let me just take away anybody that's in a public uh, space that is doing good work because some people are in public space spaces and they do everything they can to spread chaos and anarchy. So we're not even going to include them, but all the people that are trying to do good in their communities and trying to make changes in the world and trying to entertain people who are going through similar things, Mm -hmm. but they 
make art to try to help someone else. I hope that they have avenues to work on their mental health in a constructive space and not be judged about it. Right. That's my hope. Mm-hmm. <sighs> that felt good. Good stuff. That that yeah, cuz I mean when whenever people bring up mental health, you can kind of feel the air get sucked out of the room and people start getting nervous mm-hmm. and it's like there's no need for you to be, be nervous. There should be a reason to talk about it. Like you should feel like open to be able to talk about it instead of being like, Ugh, yeah, it's like, Oh, mm, mental health. I don't know. <gasps> Walking on eggshells type of thing. There's no need. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we're going to talk about another topic on a lighter note. Is it lighter? Somebody got married. That is lighter. Who got married? Issa Rae. Oh, yeah. See, man, <laughs> so much stuff is going on. Let me tell you about Issa Marie. That's not her name. That's funny. I feel like that would be Issa Marie Ray, but that's not <laughs> her Marie, name. It's Issa Ray something. Yo, why did did she? Issa Marie. <laughs> Terrible. Um, she did get married, and no one knew she was engaged. No one knew she was dating. Right. And uh, that was they said that was her longtime boyfriend, too, so that's good. Long time. Good. <clears throat> yeah. Well, like no, no, no. I was saying like, oh, I ain't long. Like how long? Like YouTube long? Like back when she was doing. I don't know if they were together that long, but okay. it ain't like it was nothing quick. They had been together for a good while, which I was gonna say like kudos to her yeah. for being able to keep her love life away from like public life. And why are you looking at the water? Like what this? you putting this water? Is that water? There's some good ass water, girl. <laughs> this water hit my soul. I was not ready. <laughs> Hold on. Thirsty. <laughs> But <laughs> mm, how many ice cubes you put in this cup? Like three, four. Oh, you put seven ice cubes in I this? Don't it, know. It don't, man, it's got that perfect, got that perfect cool to it, oh and then God. you got the metal. I'm sorry, okay. the water was good, damn it. Okay. Anyway, put seven ice cubes in my cup from now on. Oh God. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. You, know, you got me laughing and coughing. I'm sorry. Anyway, but kudos to her for being able to keep her relationship in the you know the back mm-hmm. while her career is just. Flourishing and doing all this good stuff. Because, mm-hmm. um, yeah, they've been together for a good while. So they got married in the South of France. Hey. South of France. The South of France. <laughs> Gotta say it like that. Which is funny because when she first made the post, she did it like in a sarcastic way. And I like low-key believed it. I was like, oh, she must have did like a cute little uh, photo shoot for Vera Wang. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's cute. Because she was like, uh, what she said, got a Vera Wang dress, um, kiss somebody's husband. Happened to have some people who um, had the same dress or something like that. Some mm-hmm. of her bridesmaids. And I was like, oh, that's cute how she wrote that. They must have did like a photo shoot for Vera Wayne. But that's funny. Like, she really got married. <laughs> when I saw the picture, I was like, oh, it's cool. Is she going to be in some wedding catalogs? Like, she, she know, getting see, money all anything. around. And then when I really believed it is when um, Yvonne Orgy had posted. I was like, oh, this is a wedding wedding. <laughs> and like, I saw oh. everybody else's pictures with the hashtag. <laughs> And then I saw uh, her stylist, who I follow her hairstylist. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, like she really did get married. She's she like, did. oh, the wedding hair. She, she not playing. She right. got she got uh, betrothed. Is and what the pictures happened. like looked amazing. I'm like, they look like they had a grand old time. Mm-hmm. It's like she's celebrating <clears throat> the end of Insecure using them HBO dollars. Right. She's she like, I'm about that, to get married now because we done. She got that overall HBO deal. Like for real, for she, she real. About, she about to be producing more content. Right. So let's go get married in the south of France. But I'm proud of her though. I yeah. love to see black X neat. It's it's cool. We I think we brought her up a year ago just talking about Issa Rae and the stuff that she's done. And, and I just used to love watching Aqua Black Girl man, in college. It was it was like a uh I think the episodes came out like once a month or something like that. Because they like had that. to and then it was like we uh we always tried to pay attention to the dates of when it would drop. Because mm-hmm. We weren't really following when they would say vi- new video would come on like Twitter or whatever. Mm-hmm. We would just kind of pay attention to our subscriptions. So when it dropped, everyone would, uh, we would get our snacks <laughs> and we would post up. Because I was, um, what did I play it on? Was it the Xbox? I think so. With YouTube? Yeah, yeah, I would play YouTube on the Xbox 360. And we would just watch it, and we would have a good time. And to see her go from that right. to where she, she is. When she blew up, it's, like, cool to see somebody's story because you feel like you blew up, you know, with them, even though yeah. you ain't you ain't got the money like she did. Right. But it's like we blew up with them because we just watched their growth from the beginning. Mm-hmm. So. And to see her now happy and <clears throat> with someone, mm-hmm. good for her. 
she deserves. She really does. And she she, she tries to put people <coughs> in um in position to be successful. Mm-hmm. If you've um did she help with she helped with a black lady sketch show, right? Like mm-hmm. she's a producer. She's a producer on it. So it's like she is putting honestly, now that I think about it, because um um where's the book? What's her name? Uh Quinta. 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 If Quinta wasn't on a Black Lady Sketch show, would she have gotten that deal with, is it ABC, with her own show? Her own show? It's like, you know, yeah. she was doing her thing and she right. was getting up but there. that elevated her even more. Yeah, because uh, people on the internet really knew Quinta, but she wasn't on television. Right. She was Everybody on knew, Buzz. Oh, he got money. Yep. <laughs> and she was on uh, BuzzFeed and all of that stuff. And then I feel like a Black Lady Sketch show and I said this to you uh, with the second season. It's a mm-hmm. good season, but I miss Quinta. Like, mm-hmm. Quinta brought a different flavor to the show. Right, right. And um, they would reference her sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, yeah, I miss Quinta, too. They miss her. Right. But she's she's now doing her, she's got her own show coming up. And, it, and it, see? <laughs> That water the is water good is enough. good. You thought I was playing. Man, I put seven high ice cubes in mine too. Um, man, you got it. It's the right amount of ice cubes, the right amount of water. It's the perfect mix. It came out tasting like heaven. We just thirsty. I think that's what it is. So. Just quenching the thirst with the nectar of the gods. There you go. Okay, that was. I like that. You, I miss my improv stuff. <laughs> anyway, um, what I, pretty much what I was getting at is Issa helped put these women in fantastic situations and now they are reaping the benefits of her of Issa doing the work that she did and getting to where she is and now she's like hey let me put my friends on and then they can branch out and they could put their friends on and then it goes onward and upward yes that needs to be that's yeah it does all people it does a lot of people they're like this is mine you know this is my name I'm getting up there I mean you're helping me you're quote unquote lifting me up instead of we're all getting there together. Mm-hmm. I've seen it firsthand. That's mm-hmm. kind of why you kind of <laughs> take a step back and be like, eh, I don't know if this is what I want to do anymore. But yeah. So. So. The baby. Ooh. Uh, the unemployed infant, <laughs> you mean? Ooh. What you got to say about? So it is a common knowledge that homophobia in black men is so strong because the black men even sometimes the black women that they grow up around treat homosexuals differently Mm -hmm. and it causes them to open their mouths and say the dumbest shit they could (laughs) ever think of and think oh it's okay because I have money and I'm the baby. Mm-hmm. Well, no, you should probably keep your mouth shut because you don't know nothing. Right. You ain't been nowhere. You refuse to open your mind and learn about. It doesn't matter what your sexual preference. Well, it does matter because there are the people, there are the pedophiles out there. They can go to hell. We're not talking about them. Mm-hmm. We're talking about people. We're talking about adult people and adult. We're adult. We're in adult, we're adult shut up in adult <laughs> relationships okay we're adult i hate you but i was never a fan of his mm. like i didn't well, see the appeal okay. what i was gonna say is first of all who people who i can't even talk see you were talking about me <laughs> that uh-huh see anyway, karma goes both ways people who don't know who the baby is the baby. rapper and he made some comments at this Rolling Loud festival where he was like, if um, shine your flashlights, if you didn't show up with HIV AIDS or any of them deadly diseases. Mm-hmm. And then what he said, uh, something about any of those diseases that will have you die in like two or three weeks. That's what he was telling his fans to do. Mm-hmm. And then he went to say some other uh, crazy stuff about um about the gay community, basically, mm-hmm. after that. And so after that, of course, he got a whole lot of backlash from a lot of people because he was ignorant into saying those yep. things. Yep. And then he made a whole lot of comments after uh-huh. the backlash. He just wouldn't stop. He was like, um, you know, I apologize 
for what he said to the uh, community, you know, who do have HIV, AIDS, and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. he was like, for all the uh, homosexuals, y'all do what y'all do over there, basically. Like, I wasn't talking to y'all or something like that. So he was still going off. Yeah. <laughs> It's like how you gonna how you gonna make a backhanded apology? And I apologize, then, but I don't apologize. Yeah, and I'm like, <clears throat> you call it HIV a gay disease. So really, you were just yeah, you was offending everybody. Yeah, and then trying to apologize so you could keep face, but then you know doing a backhand thing, pretty much <clears throat> cutting your own foot off. So after that, he had a whole lot of backlash from people like Elton John. And- that that was the one that. Killed him. Uh-huh. That yeah, was as soon as El- Elton. Okay, Elton John. He's been doing his thing. He's retired mm-hmm. essentially, um, so he's living his life, having a good old time. Finally, happy with himself. Y'all, y'all should check out Rocket Man. That's a really good movie to show like his his life and the struggles that he went through and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So he's finally happy with who he is. Mm-hmm. For you to wake up. Sir Elton John. <laughs> Elton John said, let me come up. He said, come wait, my a, glasses wait on a minute. Fix my hair and talk to this young man here. Probably saw this on his iPhone 12 Pro Max sitting poolside next to his husband and said, <laughs> wait a minute. What you are not about to do is try to throw every single loving person in this community under the bus. You, sir, are an idiot. <laughs> And, and you it was deserve. Like a lot of people. I can't even remember all the people who I saw. Man, that went off on them. And then the girl who you had that song with, um, what's the girl name? Mm-hmm. Dua Lipa. I'm about to say. He mm-hmm. got a um, cause I like that song she got. But anyway, he on the um, he rap on one one part of it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, she was like, you know, hurt by what he said too. And I guess I don't know if they're gonna pull it from the from the song or what. But anyway, Oof. other people trying to add themselves to the songs like if uh you need somebody mm. you know put me on losing that on the stream checks man and the, then a lot of people been canceling stuff on them and stuff like that so the baby I guess gonna his end PR up, team need to get on it the baby gonna end up in the diapers because he ain't gonna be Ooh. able to buy nothing <laughs> and then i didn't even look into this but one of my clients told me about this today was like did you hear what um the baby was saying about Lil Nas X? and i was like no nah. and i thought he was saying something bad about him but i guess he was trying to be on his side i don't know if he's trying to get pulled from you know the rest of the community and help him but anyway it caught it got boosted to come out the woodwork and some crazy stuff Uh-oh. anyway i think Lil Nas X said something about um, if he wanted to be naked on stage, he would or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then, um, basically, the baby, you know, agreed with. It. He was like, you know, do what you do. Like, I guess he agreed with. It. I ain't read the story, but I'm having mm-hmm. to read it anyway. Um, so Boosie came and said something about it because he ain't agree. And you know, Boosie always say some off the wall stuff anyway. Of course. So I'm gonna have to look into the story when I get a chance to read into it. But that's so, that's the gist of it. Somebody said. My client told me about it. <laughs> somebody on Twitter said that Bootsy is down low and that's why he go he's so he be going so hard on the uh, gay community the gay community and it makes sense because anybody we have seen it it's almost like a bingo game not even bingo, bingo. what's what's the game where like no matter what you do it's the same outcome every single time i don't know what it is i can't think of it it's a but, board game no 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 matter of fact it's like this everybody knows that there is a train that's going to hit the station at the same time Every single day. Mm-hmm. Let's say it's nine ten in the morning. Mm-hmm. When people do what they do and they're like, oh, the gays shouldn't have this. They shouldn't have that. We should make these laws or whatever it is that they do. Soon as that nine ten train come around, it comes out that that person got a boyfriend that they sneak into the hotel or whatever it is that they do. And then they got to have a press conference with their wife standing right next to him, holding hands, talking about this is not who I am. I'm a good Christian man who loves his family. And I just got caught up in the moment. And then their whole career crashes down. It's going to come out. I'm going to say, what are you? What are you? What are you saying? Caught up. And I was like, I was caught up. I can't. I can't with you. I care with you, <laughs> but we've seen it so many times mm-hmm. with these uh, politicians, with these entertainers, right? Pretty much, people just <clears throat> just shut up sometimes. Sometimes it's good to mind your own business. Sometimes it's I mean, it's good to, to have an opinion because, of course, we on a podcast, we have our opinions. Yes, but sometimes it's good to mind your own business. Yes, see, 
we like sometimes we talk about things, mm -hmm. but we try not to go into areas that we don't know about. And we try not to. I mean, you know, I, I say some ignorant stuff sometimes, but I always say it as I don't know. And it's something that I'm willing to learn. Mm. It's something that I'm willing to do research on. I just didn't do the research before we did the show. It's, you know, it kind of sparks it afterwards. Like, oh, I want to read up on it right. and be smart about it. Right. But some of these people, they don't care about none of that. They're just like, this is what I think and feel. So yeah, I'm just going to spout it out and have reckless abandon. And then so when, that same, when that same energy is met with you, you're like, oh, y'all, y'all trying to take my, my, my money from me? You don't want me to All perform, these oh, okay? Yeah, like these people are probably talking to him like, "Look, you understand? You 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 got the right to say how you feel, but this is what we need to do. <laughs> there are consequences <laughs> to your actions because the uh, son, this person to put out of here, this contract to end it, da da da. Like, uh, you messing with your money? That poor <laughs> PR person has lost <laughs> sleep. I feel like they woke up the next day and heard about it and was like. <laughs> it's <laughs> DEFCON <laughs> 1. Like, oh my God. Shit has gotten real. <sighs> yes. Who do we need to apologize to to keep these checks coming in? Because, <laughs> oh, the baby. What about the baby? I can't, I can't, I can't stand you so <laughs> I just much. had to do it. I just had to. But uh, was there, before we continue, was there anything else you wanted to add? I'm talking about his situation? Yeah. Um, nah, this body. I mean, mind your, oh, me. mind your business, the baby. That's all. Just mind your business. <laughs> Stop sticking your nose in other people's business. Yep. Like, if you're gonna talk, mm -hmm. if you're gonna have an opinion, at least be somewhat read up on what you're talking about. Right. Because if there's one thing that I have seen, mm -hmm. is that the internet is very unforgiving. Very. very unforgiving and the second they have something that they can take out of this situation wasn't even taken out of context mind mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. but if they have something that can be taken out of context they will run it and turn it into its own thing but if you give them something raw and it's not out of context right you might as well count your career over for at least six months six whole because you get canceled for a while and then you got to wait for someone else to do something stupid and then they can get canceled. And then, and then you can come about what right you did. on they back. Like, oh, we missed it. Welcome back. There'll always be someone that'll come back and be like, oh, didn't we cancel him for saying the stuff about the gays? Be like, yeah, but that was that was six A months ago. ago. We on this guy's neck now. So, you know, we'll he'll mess up again. We'll we'll cancel him again. Right. So. um, OK. OK. Speaking of music. Music. Because this came out the other day. Yeah. And me and my friends trying to figure out how to make this a girl's trip. You talking about that lovers and friends? Tell me again. Let me tell you something. Tell me again. Let me tell you something. It Baby. sounds too I good do. to be true. This better not be no um, fire festival all over again. It's going to be. This thing better work. Snoop Dogg is presenting this. Mm -mm. It ain't got nothing to do with Ja Rule and nobody else. Where is it supposed to be in Atlanta? No, Vegas. Vegas? Okay, I'm, Vegas, I'm cool Vegas, May 2022. Okay. Did you see the lineup, though? I, I glanced it. I didn't want to look at all the names because I was it's like... It's a lot of names, but I'm going to give you a few. Let me tell you. I'm going to give you a few. I mean, because you know Louisiana Usher, came out hard. Usher already in Vegas for his uh, residency, right? Us so Bucks. He, he, he headlined the thing. Then you got Luda, Lil Jon, Neo, Lauren Hill. I don't know if she's going to make it or not. You know, full well Lauren Hill ass not going to be there. <laughs> she's going to be late a couple times probably. They're going to be late to your own shit. We got TLC, Sierra, Nelly, Brandon, Monica, Lil Kim, T-Pain. Oh, she, really, she really reading the whole I'm just rundown. getting a few. A few. A few. A few. I'm getting you a few. <laughs> a few. You a feel me? <laughs> Attention, teachers. Wah. Boots and the The boots accent. No, you're not. Oh. Anyway, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got Juvie. We got Too Short. We got Trina Tweet. A. Marie. Tweet. When last time you heard from A. Marie. A. Marie? Yep. They got some good people in there. Damn. damn. <laughs> so, it's supposed to be a week-long festival? It's um two days. That's a lot. I would have made it at least a four-day weekend. Yep. 
And I missed the um that today they had where you can do the stuff on layaway. <laughs> but oh, I missed the what? I missed the uh the, the time. They did it at ten, oh. which was twelve their time, and I was working and I didn't realize it after. So they was like, they got stuff on wait list now. Good. So you can be on wait list. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your ass out of Vegas. What? We going to Vegas. This is about to be a girl's trip to Vegas. What you mean? Mm. The what wrong you girl's trip. You better not come back with no us. Ooh, let me stop. Let me see. Send let me, me a stop. wait list request. Okay, I'm gonna have to join the wait list. I'm gonna have to tell my friends. We gotta join the wait list, y'all. Kayla wasn't listening to my joke. You said it's about an Usher baby. Here's what's what ter- said. Here's what's terrible. <laughs> Kayla gonna listen to the episode later and realize what I said. What you said? That was out that uh I wasn't about to say nothing about no Usher say baby. It again. You said don't come back with an Usher baby. I want no, I stopped that that's not the joke well, I was repeat, telling. What you say? It's not funny now. I wanna know. I said, Don't you come back with no Usher and then I stopped. Wasn't talking about no Usher baby. Usher what? To my whatever he had a couple of years ago. Wait, I'm confused. That's exact. Uh, hey. Oh, that's what you were talking about. Like I said, they I don't said be that, trying to they judge said people. That was a lie. I don't be trying to. Did he just have another baby? I don't know. Girl. I stopped paying attention Him and his to girl Usher. That he with, they got. They had a second baby. It was some Usher did. Oh, when I found out what he said to T Pain. When what he, said to T-Pain? he told T Pain that he ruined R and B. When he said this, look at you clutching your purse. You ain't know this was. This came out. I think they were doing a documentary about something. About something, and they oh, asked sure. T Pain about it. They were on the plane. They were having a good time. Then Usher pulled him to the side and said, "He said it to his face." Said it to his face. Oh, I gotta find the clip oh, for my you. Goodness. Oh yeah. I'm hurt. Ever since then, you I was like, T Pain. I was like. T Pain ain't do nothing. Why can I to hear nobody. Uh, AD yawning in the background, making all that noise. <laughs> <laughs> T Pain can actually sing without auto tune. Yeah, I'm, I'm hurt. But this was at the height of T Pain and auto tune, and then oh, everyone wow. was starting to do it. And then Usher was like, "Yeah, man." Uh, oh, so he's saying you you ruined R and B because he was tired of everybody doing um, auto tune. Yep. And, and he, then Usher's ass turned around and used auto tune too. Uh-huh. And on that, oh my god, song that mm-hmm. about auto tune. Yep. Uh, Yep. I'm still a Usher fan, but I'm I'm disappointed in those comments. Yep. But wow. Interesting. So yeah. <coughs> Hurt. Tell me again. I'm getting to Vegas for that okay. concert. There's gonna be a lot of people. You can go out there and stay out there. Go and move out there. I'm gonna go out there for like two days. As long as the uh, okay. concert is. Mm-hmm. And then come back come ain't gonna have no I'm, key to the house. <laughs> for what? What's wrong with the Lovers and Friends concert? It's called Lovers and Friends for a reason. You're t- trying to go down there with your friends and end up with a lover? Come on now. Well, you can go too. You just ain't got to stand by us. What? I, I, <laughs> go down there, even I go down there with my lover and stand with my friends. <laughs> so I'm going to go stand by my... Y'all going to be over there singing, having a good time. I'm going to be 15 you feet you away. You got to be there if you don't want to. Oh, so I'm going to just go in the hotel room? <laughs> do you know how boring... You, a, you know do, how boring a hotel room in Vegas... In Vegas. What can I go do? Unless, go, unless we go, wait, it, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to go sit in another timeshare presentation for three <laughs> hours so I can get free tickets to the damn, um, what's his name from, uh, damn, what's the show? Um, Ty Bridges. Ty Bridges. Go sit in that <laughs> Love Connection <laughs> game with his triple size suit on. You got to admit, you had fun because he was drunk hosting. I mean, so it was fun. he was drunk. He was drunk as hell. <laughs> that shit was blowing but me. But it was funny though. <laughs> But look, oh, go ahead. We really did sit in a timeshare presentation for three hours. So we, so we can get, get some, some free stuff. Free stuff. And then one enough. of the tickets that we got, we couldn't even use. I was like, what a waste of <laughs> three damn hours. Then they wouldn't, we didn't even get money because someone else tried to give us money. We should have, we should have took that one where the guy was going to give us like $200. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that one. Oh, you got it. But do. the shows was fun. And we had that free boat ride with it. Italian We did. Us. We did. That was a nice boat ride. Right. That, that was, was a nice boat ride. That was funny. But. Okay, I hit that butt hard. You did. <laughs> you hit that butt hard indeed. I'm sorry. I mean, if you wanted to make it a uh, guys and girls trip, we could do that too. That sounds like trying to put too much logistics together, and I just got so overwhelmed. So and this See, is next May. Not complaining. Okay, but I'm, all I'm saying is, don't tell me I can go to Vegas and then try to stick me in a hotel room I ain't, <laughs> all I didn't weekend. Do that. <laughs> I just offered uh, it to be a group thing. Be like, yeah, go do. You know, See, I'm go get you, you a buffet or I'm something. I'm giving you all these offers and you uh, shooting it down. That ain't my fault. I mean, okay, if you're willing to go to WrestleMania and it's right 
you know, it's going to be right down the street. Yeah. Then we could go to Vegas. I, I just, just said it. You just got uh, exhausted about Kayla, the planning. That was a whole bit. Oh, okay. That was me okay, having let's make it fun. A, a group thing. Because I'm sure everybody loves everybody who's on that list. Oh, oh okay. We all going to be singing. You're going to act like you ain't going to be singing the songs. And I'm going to look over and you're going to be like, hey. I'm going to sing some of the songs. Okay. All I'm saying is if we spend our money. And then the concert don't happen. This concert better happen. And okay. if it don't happen, they better give us our money back. I'm just but saying, it if, not be if no it's actually going to happen, then I would rather get the tickets in February. The thing's going to be sold out. That's why they should make it a four-day thing instead of two days. The Is thing, it going to be outside, too? If the things went on sale today and it's already a wait list, you know it's going to be sold out. That's why you got to get on it early. You also know it's going to be like a Sigma variant of COVID. We ain't going to be able to go. No, that thing going <laughs> to <stupid>. mutate. <laughs> COVID going to have actual legs and arms and be, and be biting people in COVID their shins. Down the street? What the hell? Be like, what is that? Is that COVID? Okay. okay. Get your house shoe. Get your slipper. Let's just hope this is a real thing because I want to. Yeah. Go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I can be like, don't go. Before we go to the end, have you ever had to stay in a Vegas hotel room and go nowhere and do nothing? No. It is the absolute Is that what you did as a kid, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to tell you all this story (laughs) and then we're going to move on. So every year, the Marine Corps ball was in Vegas. So we would go as a family so we could take family pictures. That would be the one time we took family pictures. (laughs) My dad would have his dress blues. My mom would have her good dress. They would put my sister in her white dress and they would put me in whatever my dad wasn't wearing that weekend. <laughs> okay. Like, so that suit probably looked. Yes. How does that suit look on you? So, I mean, I was skinny and my dad was skinny too, but you know, back then big suits was a thing. So it was like so that it was Steve still Harvey kinda, suit. Oh, that looked like no, Steve Harvey. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Wasn't no Steve Harvey suit because Steve Harvey was, he was wearing 6X. Okay. I was only wearing the extra large and I was about a large. So we would take the picture. And then my parents would take us back upstairs and would stick us in the hotel room <laughs> while they went to the Marine Corps ball. They barely had Nickelodeon. And then by the time you actually got back to the room, it was mm-hmm. Nick at night. And that was back when they were showing stuff from the 70s, the 60s oh. and 70s, Nick at night. Oh. Wasn't nothing good that I could enjoy. You was watching Happy Days? No, I was they flipping through the channel. That. I got so bored one time, I was watching the Kino channel. What you know <laughs> about that, that Kino? I didn't know what that is. Kino. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically like it's it's the lotto but it, it continues like every 30 minutes or something so there oh is a God. channel where it was just numbers and you watch the ball launch into the number <laughs> and, roll down and it was like <laughs> no it wouldn't even roll oh. it was i'd have to show i'd have to pull up a video of oh what the kino was and it was i would just sit there like why can't i fall asleep it is 12 o'clock at night i am bored out of my mind i want to go to bed but I have sleep issues. I have insomnia at 12 years old. So, yeah, yeah, Kino in Vegas at 12 o'clock at night, just hoping I would wake up in the morning and get a breakfast buffet. That was like the only good thing about it you was we would always in the morning. Mm-hmm, get the go get 16 pieces of bacon Bing. and five pieces of sausage with that one pancake that they would make for you on the thing. Oh, my God. So when We're you said so when I brought up. <laughs> Being in the room, that brought up that memories. was coming that was, from that a, was a trigger. That was coming up from like, a dark you, place. You throw me in a hotel room. It's like you want me to go Damn. with you to lovers and friends and <laughs> stick me in a damn room. All I saw was that <laughs> damn Kino ball. <laughs> memories. <laughs> oh my god, I can't. <laughs> I was like, I wonder if anybody's actually winning this thing because the numbers are just—it's constant. Oh god, not the sound. I really gotta find. Hold on, I want you to. I want you to see this before <laughs> we go, because I I I don't know if it's gonna actually be on like YouTube or something. Mm-hmm. But if it is, I want you to see it, and then we gonna uh, because I'm hungry. Like K E N O K. Yep. Kino game. Watch it. Watch it. Not have it. <laughs> or it might pop up. You never know. And then the internet's acting up. So now. YouTube not playing. The Kino. <sighs> try to mind. You can since you got that good uh, Verizon. I got damn T-Mobile. T-Mobile is trash. What is it? Kino game? Yeah. See if, see if something will pop up. 
Is it any of that? Yeah. The first one? Okay. So like this one? Wait, let me see if it Okay, so you see it looked just like that, right? Mm-hmm. And then uh I don't know if it'll let you like fast forward, but what would happen is Oh jeez. <laughs> and there's the ad at the beginning of the video, the Kayla special. <laughs> okay, so let me let me go back a little bit cuz it's going to tell you how to play and then I want to skip ahead. No, I don't want to turn it up. Stop it. <laughs> iPhone doing that stupid the stuff. So it looked just okay. like that on the TV. So, yeah, it would look like that, right? Mm-hmm. And then well, she's picking, but whenever it would actually do it, it would actually like the ball would drop. Mhm. Let me see if I can go back. Not that search. <laughs> oh god. What what is your phone? I don't understand your phone. Got this damn old phone. It's only one year old. Okay. Is that 41 minutes? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Them okay. Is that them picking? That was pretty fast. But anyway, it's like that. Wow. But it was funnier yeah, on the TV. Watching that, trying yep. to go to sleep, but couldn't. I used to, oh my God, I would put it on ESPN. I'm like, yeah, wow. sports will make me bored. And then I would get into Stuart Scott. That's why Stuart Scott was my boy. Mm-hmm. I, used to, I used to love seeing Stuart Scott. All right. Uh, weekly motivation to get everyone through the rest of the week. <clears throat> so, dearest, best of wives, <laughs> the coffin machine. Oh, I love you. Weekly motivation. A stall song. Gotta yeah. stall it out. Mm, that is a stall song. Um, weekly motivation. I mean, do I have one? <laughs> I'm trying to motivate myself. Right. So what would I tell myself this self. week? Self? Self. Myself self. Huh? Huh? Um, <coughs> what would I tell myself this week? How am I feeling right now? Low key exhausted. So I just need to slow down. So I'm gonna tell the people to slow down. <laughs> okay. Um now, I don't know how you're going to do that because I'm trying to figure out how to do that because looking at my schedule from now all the way to the end of the month, I get exhausted looking at it because it's like fully booked. And it's a, like I said, it's a blessing to do to be like that. But I also need a mental break too. So, yeah. Slow down, y'all. <laughs> Yellow Ooh. light. Slow down. BB. Yeah. Chill out. Right. Um. Stop telling, stop putting so much pressure on yourself. Me or the people? I mean, you listen to. Okay. So this is for. Because they hit me already. <laughs> yeah. Um, this one starts with me, but the people who do it too. Um, I know sometimes that I put pressure on myself because. I just want to be great. That's I I believe that if there's anything that has me attached to it, it's got to be good. It's got to. And I know it come, it probably is coming from an unhealthy place, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's how I push myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've had, um, I kind of work myself up to a point where I either drain myself or I get my emotions worked up. So for all of you that, you know, you feel the need to either be great or to try to make everyone happy or try to please everybody or whatever that means to you, Mm -hmm. actually take a second and say, what am I doing this for? Who does this really benefit? Because, I mean... I'm wearing myself out and I, I get burnt out faster because of this. So maybe I should just chill out for a while. So you said slow down. It's pretty much the same thing that I'm saying. Right. Slow down. Today I didn't work. I didn't work out in the field today, but like being at home and having AD here, and just taking a second to catch my breath because I feel like sometimes I feel like I'm running at 100 miles per hour when I go to work. And I'm so mentally exhausted some days where I'm just like, 
I don't know what I want to do. I don't want to do anything else but just try to gather my bearings. And then before I know it, it's nighttime and it's time to go to bed. Mm -hmm. I got to get up and do it again in the morning. But today was a day where I could, I mean, the morning was frantic and it did cause me, it caused my anxiety to spike. And I had my moment where I cried and all that stuff. But then when it got, when things got going it slowed down a bit and I was able to catch my breath, I was like, okay, like things are going, I can focus I can make sure he's okay. I can get on the bike for mm-hmm. for a while and just work on myself because I needed that that exertion of energy because it was just all here. Right. So that's my long winded way of saying just don't be so hard on yourself. Right. And my you, way of saying slow down. Yep. Yeah. Which um I do have to do more of, which I plan mm-hmm. on doing more of yes. soon because I really want to spend more family time than working. Yeah. Like I want that perfect balance and I'm still working on that perfect balance. So. I I do honestly believe it's a little bit harder for you because, you know, you're running your own business and there's that pressure to, you know, if you don't service your clients at the times that are good for them, then they'll just go somewhere else. But you really don't. It's want not that. even that. Because a lot of my clients, they're very loyal. They've been with me for years. Mm-hmm. It's just the fact of a lot of things like come up like, you know, they're trying to set stuff for their vacation or back to school or somebody starting a new job. And, of course, yeah, they want to look good for that. Yeah, I understand. And then that. with the times I have available, sometimes that doesn't always fit with people's schedule. Mm-hmm. And then once it is booked up, you have some of those people who um, can only come after work. A lot of times I'm trying to be done by a certain time so I can get AD. Mm-hmm. And then I have to like sacrifice that and have you pick them up and then stay later. Yeah. And then that's sacrificing my mental because I'm tired. Yeah. And I can't get that time with you and him as much as I would like. Yeah. So. No, I understand. It's a lot of rearranging I'm going to have to do soon. Yeah. People are not going to like it, but it's just going to be. For my mental. Yeah. Like we just talked about early. They're going to have to suck that shit up, B. Because <clears throat> one, you know, you and I talk all the time about how I worry about you. Mm-hmm. And you'd be like, well, you don't have to. But I do because you and I go together like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> and a, a sandwich ain't a sandwich without jelly. Right. You understand? I be running myself ragged. Exactly. Trying to accommodate and appease people. Exactly. Because, I mean, um, it was something we were watching. Um, I forget what it was, but it was. Uh, oh, no, I was watching Psych and um, Detective Lassiter found out he was having a baby and he was kind of like not being who he normally was. And he was sitting with Spencer's dad and he was like um, he was asking him, Henry, how did you like pretty much like the mistakes he made. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know, I got to a point where I realized like, there's always going to be a bad guy to chase. There's always going to be that thing that you have to get after. But the one thing that I regret is not spending that time with my son. And then, you know, they, their relationship was strained even through adult years. Mm -hmm. And it's that, it's, it's that pressure you put on yourself to try to get stuff done where then, what gets sacrificed is the time that we spend at home. Right. And, and these are times I can't get back. So I don't want to yeah. be sacrificing it like that. So well, it's, it's always going to be, be a major event. It's always going to be um, a vacation where someone needs their hair to get done. But, you know, some people are just going to have to understand that. I'm only one person. Yeah. Family comes first that's why and i always do a lot of recommendations because i keep a close mm-hmm. knit of other stylists that i love too so i be like hey i can't get you in but so and so got this yeah. going on so they trust that some of them don't they be like well i didn't wait then you got an opening or okay get back or a cancellation i'm like all right cool <laughs> but i'm not gonna make super extra time yeah on days that i have a lot of off because that's what's been getting me working every day i think the one thing that i don't do that i should do is the days where you text me and say, hey, can I add a client on Sunday? I should tell you no, but then I'm like, 
it's your business. So that's why I don't tell you no, because I know why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I be wanting to tell you no. This is supposed to be family time. What about me? But you know how you do sometimes. You be like, well, babe, this is the only time they could get in my chair. And like, I'm like, I'm like, I don't, I just don't want to argue. I don't want to argue with you. I'm right. I know for the rest of August, stuff is going to be yeah. on Sundays. But except for when we go to, when we go to Atlanta, that's yeah. going to be, that's going to be a movie. But I'm rearranging some things. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that was a weekly motivation <laughs> yes. for us. For all of us. I hope y'all got to get a little bit out of that for yourselves. Right. All right. So social media. Instagram, Mickey Styles IG. Uh, TikTok, Mickey Styles 27. Um, Facebook, uh, Mickey Styles Online. Uh, that's how tired you are. We need to eat. It's 7.30. I'm, I haven't even taken my I take my sleep aid at 7. It's 7.30. I ain't going to be worth nothing Let's in the morning. Let's wrap it up. Mm. Uh, social media, R.I.P. underscore everywhere. Um, the YU Podcast, wherever you listen to your podcast. Tell your friends about us, please. We need we need more friends and family and acquaintances and even people you hate. You'd be like, you know what? I hate you, but I want you to do better so then I can stop hating you. Well, listen to this listen podcast. Listen to the podcast. It's going to it's gonna, uh, warm your heart and soothe the soul. I don't know. It All right. Is. We appreciate every single one of you for listening. Those of you that have gotten your Patreon perks in the mail, thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed the handwritten note that I wrote Kayla's going to do the next two because I'm tired of writing with my hands. <laughs> yes, I did. I did that for you. Whatever. I let Kayla sign it, though. Anyway, let me stop because I just got Throw the I got the, the look of death. OK, um, but for those of you that would like to enjoy some of these perks, please consider becoming a financial member of the YU crew on Patreon.com backslash YU pod. We've got. Uh, three, five, and ten dollar tiers. The five and ten dollar tiers get lovely membership cards and a handwritten note. And uh, the other thing, the thing, the keychain. Key mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Okay. You tired? It's I am. Me, y'all. Yes. We love you. For Michaela. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> and Alfonso, we bid you a good day and adieu. Remember, first, love yourselves. Please, if no one else gonna love you, you gotta love you, okay? Wash your hands. Delta variant is around, so wear your mask. Love each other. Hug each other. Remember, if you gonna win, you gonna win as a winner. And if you gonna lose, you gonna lose as a loser and not as a quitter. Take care of yourselves. Don't put so much pressure on yourself. And slow the hell down. Slow down. We love you. (laughs) Okay, I'm done. We, I'm hungry, damn it. We will see you next time. Bye.